Hi, I'm Sarah Brown of Questionable Press, and this is my questionable little shop. I'm a letterpress printer, so everything you see behind me is letterpress equipment. I'm just going to give you a little run through my shop. Um, letterpress is the original form of text printing. It originated in the late 1400s, developed, developed by Gutenberg, and it was one of the main ways of printing text into the 1960s. So my equipment is mostly from the 40s and 50s, um, so it's relatively new in the world of letterpress, but it's still all pretty vintage in today's world. Um, so every, every letterpress print starts with text. Well, not everyone, but I'm gonna start with text today. So this is all leading. Um, if you consider building a form, which is setting type, is, is similar to um, a building a brick wall, then this is the mortar of the brick wall. And I'll show you the bricks here in a minute, which is the text. So I'm gonna grab these two pieces of leading, and then you can come over. All of these cases or cabinets are full of cases of type. Um, each case holds a different size or different style of font. I have about 150 cases, maybe a little bit more. Um, so here's one. They all have the same layout. So lowercase over here, uppercase over here. Uh, before the this style of layout, the uppercase letters were in, or type were in the upper case. They were two different cases, so hence upper and lower case. That's how those things are named. Um, another fun little fact is the mind your P's and Q's phrase started in the letterpress tradition because Q's and, oh no, that's a P. And then this is a Q, but it looks like a P because all text is, all type is backwards. Um, to set type, you take your letting, which we already have, you set your composing stick to the, cert to the length you'd like it, and you start selecting your type um, and setting it upside down. So this is an A tier, I'll so move on to the E because you can tell that it's backwards. And so if you were to look at it like that, it's a backwards E, but if I turn it upside down, it's got a little notch in it, and I set the text right reading. So it's like a double negative, it's an upside down and the text is backwards, you can set it right reading. Double L and an O. Hello. And of course, an exclamation point. Okay, so the type is set. Leave those there. Over here. So I pair my handset type with hand carved images. Here is a block that I carved. This is linoleum cut. And here it is printed. So that type and that block are printed together in two different runs through each press, through press. I'll show you those in a minute. Um, here's something else I carved. This is wood engraving. So it's just a different form of image making. Um, it's much, carries much more detail. So I carved, hand carved that, printed it here. And you, and assemble these. Those are, this is part of my little offerings to make yourself a little toad. And I have all sorts of little creatures you could make. This guy just lives up here so I get to see his cute little face. Okay, so you have your type and your hand carved image and you lock it up and everything's locked together and held in with tension. These expand out and it's all held in together. And you can load it in a press. This is the first press I ended up with. It's a platen press. Um, the paper would go here. I'm just gonna use this piece of paper just as an example. So just think of that as a piece of paper. Um, also imagine a set of rollers, rubber rollers that have ink on them rolling over the type as this closes so it gets inked and then it prints, boom. And then you pull your paper out, put another one in and repeat. So that's the basics of a platen press. This is one of my main workhorse presses. Um, it's a 
Heidelberg windmill. It's a platen press too, but it's just a big behemoth of a press. It's fully automated. Um, I'm not gonna explain it, but I'm just gonna show you it running because it's cool. <laughs> show you my final press and show you how this one really prints. Um, this is a Vandercook. It's a different style of press than those two. It's a cylinder press so the type goes on the bed of the press and um, I'm going to print something for you. So I've mixed my ink. I hand mix all my ink and then like I said each color on a print is a different run through the press so I have to mix that color Put it on the press like you see now, print it, clean it up, and then set everything up again. So this is all set up to print. Um, but a lot of the work in letterpress is getting your type or your image set and printing just how you want it. And then you can print multiples really easily. oscillate so it keeps the ink even. This press is from 19, the early 1940s. I don't know the year. I just got this thing running this year and it's really made a big change. Now I can print big pieces of art, not just small things. Oh yeah, so I use the platen presses, that big windmill, to print like cards and my um, paper sculptures. Um, smaller pieces of paper, prints like long runs of small things really fast. But this thing, it takes a little bit longer to print, print each one, but I can print a big sheet of paper. So this is what I use to print my posters. Um, and I have a few things coming up that I'll be using it for in the next year. All right, so there's the types already set, obviously. Um, this, and then it's locked in and I just wanted to ink it up to get a little extra ink on there. And then I already have it set up to print on my paper as I want. So I've locked my paper onto the cylinder. And I'm just going to roll it over. Mystery bag. <laughs> and of course I make some changes, but that's good for now. You at least get to see it. Um, the mystery bag is something I'm offering for the holiday season. You can find out more about it and see everything else I make with all this equipment at questionablepress.com or on Instagram at questionablepress. Thanks for watching.